Okay, so this is one of those videos that I'm really, really excited for, and that's because I have some more details to share with you regarding the new 2019 Mac Pro, alongside some Mac updates that Apple would be doing this year. So grab some snacks, all that popcorn, all those drinks, because this is going to be a fun one, and here's everything you need to know about the Mac Pro 2019 and more. Oh, also forgot to mention, we're doing another giveaway at the end of this video, so definitely stay tuned for that and don't forget about that. Okay, so out of hundreds of devices that I've gathered and used over the years, there's only a single one that I use considerably longer than anything else every single day. It's something that I use for at least 12 hours every day, and surprise, surprise, it's not my smartphone, but actually my MacBook Pro. So there we go, this is the device that I do all of my work from, uh, and Macs are actually way more interesting to me than iPhones are, just because, you know, I can actually do work from them and, you know, make a living out of it. So every small improvement that we get with a Mac, whether it's a new processor that's only faster by 100 megahertz or more RAM, or a slightly faster GPU, no matter how small the change is, it has a great positive impact on my workflow. And the best Mac that you can buy right now should be the Mac Pro, should be. The Mac Pro is Apple's highest end Mac, so it's a full desktop computer with high and components such as ECC RAM or error correction memory, two desktop class GPUs, a central cooling system, a 12-core Intel Xeon processor. But the thing is, it's it's really not the most powerful Mac anymore. In fact, even Apple's cheapest Mac that you can buy right now, the Mac Mini, is faster than the Mac Pro at exporting video just because of the newer processor architecture. The Mac Pro itself hasn't been updated since 2013, making 2019 the sixth year since we haven't had any updates to the Mac Pro lineup, which which is crazy because keep in mind, this is supposed to be Apple's highest end Mac. Apple was heavily criticized for moving away from the prosumer market, and luckily that criticism did have a positive impact in the end. So in 2017, Apple released a new iMac Pro, a new computer basically, same as the iMac, just comes in space gray, and it's significantly more powerful than the iMac. So this one comes with ECC RAM, same as the Mac Pro, and the newer 18-core Intel Xeon processor, basically outclassing the Mac Pro by a large margin in every single way. And then in 2018, Apple released the new MacBook Pros, which featured up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, a newer Vega 20 GPU, as well as up to 4 terabytes of internal fast storage. So Apple's finally listening to the pros, and they've also officially announced in late 2017 that they're actually working on a brand new Mac Pro. A new one completely redesigned, and here's what Phil Schiller had to say about this. With regards to the Mac Pro, we are in the process of what we call completely rethinking the Mac Pro. We're working on it, we have a team working hard on it right now, and we want to architect it so that we can keep it fresh with regular improvements, and we're committed to making it our highest end, highest throughput desktop system designed for our most demanding pro consumers. As part of doing a new Mac Pro, it is by definition a modular system. We will be doing a pro display as well. Now, you won't see any of these products this year, so 2017, uh, we're in the process of that. We think it's really important to create something great for our pro customers who want a Mac Pro modular system, and that will take longer than this year to do. And here's another statement that Apple made about the Mac Pro in early 2017. At some point, Apple came to the conclusion that the 2013 Mac Pro concept was fundamentally flawed. It was tightly integrated internally, which allowed for some very nice features, so it was small and beautiful, a pro machine that demanded placement on your desk, not under your desk, and it could run with quietly, but the tight integration made it hard to update regularly. The idea that expansion could be handled almost entirely by external Thunderbolt portfolio sounded good on paper, but hasn't panned out in practice, and the GPU design was a bad prediction. Uh, we bet on a dual GPU design, multiple smaller GPUs with pro-level performance coming from parallel processing, where the industry has gone entirely in the other direction, so machines with one big GPU. Okay, so that was an interesting one, so what's, what's the take from all this? Well, Apple is indeed aware that the Mac Pro 2013 was not what most people wanted. You know, the fact that the GPU was proprietary to the Mac, uh, the Mac Pro, and the CPU was not upgradable outside of the same Xeon models made the Mac Pro get outdated fairly quickly. Also, the cooling system was, was good, but it was just not enough. But like they've said, they are working on a completely redesigned Mac Pro, a modular Mac Pro with easy to remove components, highest end CPUs that you can buy, as well as the highest end GPUs that you can buy. So all of this was in 2017, and we've actually had some reports that the new Mac Pro would be released in 2018, 
Obviously, it wasn't because we're in 2019 now and we still don't have it. But luckily, Min Chikuo, the analyst with the best track record by far when it comes to Apple, released a new report claiming that Apple would be releasing the brand new Mac Pro in 2019 this year alongside a brand new 6K display to go with it. And we've actually made our own take on both of these, a uh, design of the concept based on the leaks and what Apple might be doing realistically in terms of the Mac Pro and also the monitor, the display. And here's what we came up with. So in terms of the Mac Pro, the pre-2013 model, uh, the cheese grater Mac Pro, that one was indeed upgradable and it was basically modular like any PC is. But it was massive and it didn't look that great. Now the 2013 model was quite the opposite. It was small and beautiful. So I do believe that the new one would be a merger of the two. So it would be larger than the current 2013 model, but it would still have a very similar design to that. So we made our concept to have the same length as two Mac Pros put together Together, uh, this would leave enough space inside for a larger GPU such as a Vega 64 or even an RTX 2080 Ti. Now in terms of the ports, with the current Mac Pro we get a microphone and a headphone jack. Now realistically with the new one I really don't think that Apple would be keeping the microphone port so expect just a single 3.5mm headphone jack. Uh, and then with the previous model we also had four USB 3.0 Type A ports. Now considering that the iMac Pro also comes with four USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports Type A, I do expect Apple to keep those legacy ports there for you know hard drives, receivers, that kind of stuff and as is. They would most likely be upgraded to the new uh, USB 3.2 standard which would actually support speeds of up to 20 gigabits per second, interesting enough the same speed as Thunderbolt 2 and half of what Thunderbolt 3 does. Now speaking of Thunderbolt, the previous Mac Pro came with six Thunderbolt 2 ports and I do expect Apple to bump these to eight, obviously Thunderbolt 3 ports this time, mostly because this device would be focused heavily on not just upgradability but also expandability so you need as many Thunderbolt 3 ports as you can get. Anything more than eight I feel like that's not really that realistic. And then I do expect the two dual gigabit Ethernet ports to be upgraded to two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports while the single HDMI 1.4 port would be upgraded to not just HDMI 2.2 capable of doing 8K 60 output but also two of these. I feel like this selection of ports is the most logical and realistic approach that Apple would take for the most pro device that they would be selling. So that was the expandability, so what about the upgradability part of it? So the way we envisioned this is with Apple literally using modules, boxes. Uh, you know how Apple, uh, with the Mac Mini 2018, they actually sell RAM kits that you can buy and put in yourself. Well, I do expect Apple to do the same with the Mac Pro. Now with the Mac Mini, it's quite a bit of a tricky installation because you need to take the whole Mac Mini apart. Uh, so with a Mac Pro, I do expect Apple to simplify the whole process. So instead of just, you know, buying the RAM kits, they would also have a CPU unit, a GPU unit, as well as the flash module itself. And from the consumer standpoint, in order to make it as easy as possible to upgrade, Apple would most likely have these as independent slidable modules. So you would lift up the top and then you could take a module out and replace it with something that's newer and, you know, something that's better. So that way users don't have to deal with cables or, you know, trying to find the best components as this would be something that Apple would be selling directly at a premium, of course, but you know, it's much easier to upgrade than having to buy it from a third-party supplier, uh, just literally sliding those in and, and that's it. And when it comes to the actual specs, the motherboard is honestly the only one that's a bit tricky because it would have to support a specific socket. Um, so since the Mac Pro would be focused towards the highest end users, I do expect an LGA 3647 socket. So this is the one that uh, was introduced with the newly announced Intel Xeon W3175 processor, this actually comes with 28 cores and 56 threads and also has a TDP of 255 watts. So, you know, this is pretty much the closest comparatively you can get to AMD's Threadripper 2. We actually have one in the office and that's actually in the rendering machine. So yeah, the Threadripper 2 is a beast and, you know, realistically, I wouldn't be surprised for Apple to design a motherboard uh, with even more than just one LGA3647 socket on it. So in that case, you could have something like two uh, of these processors and you would have 56 cores and 112 threads of processing power on this, which would be insane. Now the GPU module itself, that would be the largest of the bunch and it could be positioned either horizontally or vertically. And this would actually allow for large scale GPUs such as the Vega 64, the Radeon 7, the RTX 2080 Ti, followed by ECC memory, and then the flash storage of even more than four terabytes which is what the MacBook Pro 2018 supports. So yeah, this is how we envision this modular system to work. 
realistically, like I said, this is the easiest way uh, for Apple to develop something like this, with those sliding rails. And an even more advanced design that I can think of um, would be having the modules outside of the Mac Pro case. Because in that case, you can have more modules, you can have, you know, uh, as many modules as you wish. You can literally stack them together uh, and you could have something like that Google's Project R, that would be awesome. But a design like that is a bit more complicated to do because obviously the motherboard is the main issue there. So yeah, maybe in a few years we'll have an amazing design like that because that's the dream, stacking against as many modules as you want. Literally a full room and making a server out of that. That would be insane. So yeah, maybe in a few years. So that was the Mac Pro. And then of course we have the display. So Ming Chi Kuo did say that Apple is working on a brand new 31.6 inch, not 5K, but 6K display, which is amazing. So Apple actually used to sell the cinema display, the Apple cinema display back in the day, and also the old Thunderbolt displays. Uh, but in 2016, when they released the new MacBook Pros with Thunderbolt 3, they discontinued the Thunderbolt display in favor of LG's ultra fine 5K monitors. And these were made in collaboration with obviously LG. Uh, I have one and it's it's great, it's, it's amazing. It's actually the exact same panel as the 27 inch 5K iMac. It's literally the same panel, but it does have a few disadvantages such as, you know, the design is not as great as an iMac. The speakers are not that great. Um, the, the stand is pretty bad, mic actually broke. So yeah, nothing can really compare to a display that's designed and manufactured and you know made by Apple themselves. Well, probably not manufactured because Apple doesn't really manufacture anything. They just outsource those. Uh, but anyway, since Apple has had the same, uh, the same display size for both the iMacs and their monitors, uh, having a 31.6 inch panel would actually mean that the iMacs would be getting updated this year as well with the same panel video on the new iMacs here with everything you need to know. And fun fact guys, there was actually this old pattern that Apple filed for, uh, which showed a Thunderbolt 3 display that also had a GPU built into it. How cool is that? An eGPU, well, a GPU built into the monitor, so you would get both a monitor and a GPU when you connect that display. We've actually made our own concept with that in mind, so it is a bit thicker than what it could be without the GPU, but it's still thinner than the current generation iMacs are. And like with a new iMacs, the new display would feature significantly thinner bezels and then rounded corners that would match the style of what Apple has been doing recently with the new iPad Pro and the new iPhones. Now when it comes to the ports, expect a very similar selection to what we get with the iMac Pro at the moment. So four Thunderbolt 3 ports, a one gigabit or even a 10 gigabit ethernet port, an SD card reader for creators, as well as a headphone jack. The resolution of the panel is set to be 6144 by 3072, which is insane. And on a 31.6 inch display panel, it would actually translate to 317 PPI. Fun fact guys, the iMac 5K right now has 318 PPI and Apple is known to adjust the resolution to a weird number just to keep the PPI the same uh, and to make scaling for developers easier. So this resolution with this display size do seem to work in terms of DPI scaling. And the best part about this display is that it won't just work with the new Mac Pro but also the new MacBook Pros as well, the Mac Mini 2018 as well as the MacBook Air. And you know, even with the 2017 and 2019 iMacs, those would be fully supported and also if you get the 2019 model of the iMac, uh, you know, the redesign, and you get, let's say, one or even two of these monitors, you would have a seamless design on your office desk because, you know, all of the displays would be looking identical. And then Bloomberg has reported that Apple is internally considering showcasing the new Mac Pro at WWDC 2019. Now, it would not be a full release, just a teaser, so similar to what Apple has done with the 2013 Mac Pro. Personally, I would expect a full release around November 2019 or even in early 2020 for a few higher end configurations. But yeah, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about the new Mac Pro? Uh, do you think, you know, a modular Mac Pro would be something you would be interested in or are you hashtag team PC master rate? But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Also subscribe to notifications if you have enjoyed this video. Tap the bell icon so that you get notified whenever some more cool in the tech videos come out, which is basically almost... I mean, every week, basically, not every day, every week. Now, the price is unknown. Uh, realistically, the baseline should cost less than the baseline iMac Pro since it doesn't come with a display. But if you had a 6K monitor, you know, the accessories and some more modules, um, then it would most likely be Apple's most expensive Mac to date. Also, guys, like I said before, we're doing another giveaway this week of a pair of Sony wireless headphones with NFC pairing. So all you have to do is just subscribe to the channel Zone of Tech and then follow on Instagram at Zone of Tech and then comment on this post with a blue iPhone XR saying why would you want to win the Sony wireless headphones and I'll be announcing the winners on Instagram via DM on March the 18th. But yeah, this has been pretty much it for this video. I'm really looking forward to a Mac Pro. Obviously, I'll be getting one. Uh, if I'm not keeping it, at least I'll show it in the, in the videos, I'll review it. Uh, hopefully it's not that crazy expensive so that, you know, I can keep it. Apple unfortunately doesn't send over anything. 
that sucks. So yeah, I'll get it probably. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next cool video, which might be tomorrow. Yes, I think it is. Yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel. See you guys in the next one. So, Tech, signing out. Cheers.